In this video we're going to consider how to use reduction formula to simplify the task of taking on a complicated integral. So in this example we consider the most general case of the integral of tan to the n um, from 0 to pi on 4. So why are we considering the most general case? Because we are trying to derive a formula and a formula is the most general case with placeholders in, in featuring in the formula that you can apply to any given specific case. So it's really this question is next to being asked to derive a formula from scratch you're actually being given the formula so our integral defined by i sub n can be accomplished by the formula which we've been given it's called a reduction formula 1 over n minus 1 minus i sub n minus 2 for all n upwards of 2 and in the second part of the question we're being asked to actually apply this formula on the specific case of tan to the 6. So first we consider the most general case tan to the n. How can we get the original integral to conform to this formula? We do that by a process of constantly re-expressing our integral into something more familiar that we can deal with. So the first thing to recognize, this question is tricky because it does require a bit of foresight. You essentially have to recognize that uh, we have a very useful result here namely tan squared plus 1 equals sec squared of x. This is a standard, standard Pythagorean identity that you're supposed to know, which is somewhat something that's akin to the more familiar Pythag identity. Col squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Very similar to that. So essentially out of that we know that tan squared equals to 1 minus sec squared of x. So the next step is then to extract a tan squared by splitting up tan to the n. If we take out a square of tan then what's left is of course tan to the n minus 2. So now you have two terms, one of which is going to be, um, it's going to lead to useful things. So, using this result we just discussed, we're going to be re-expressing, have I just made a mistake? It would seem that I have just made a mistake. Obviously I can't rearrange a simple formula. Never mind, we'll correct it here. Tan squared x. If tan squared x plus 1 equals sec squared, obviously then um, tan squared x is equal to sec squared x minus 1. Not the other way around. Um, I'll make mistakes from time to time, so if you spot something that I fail to spot, obviously um, you'd want to tell me so I can fix it up as soon as possible. But that's right, I'm sure of that. Now, so we were expressing this tan squared um, as sec squared x minus 1. And from here, it's a simple application of u substitution. Um, we want to find something that we can differentiate um, and of course within this formula the term that is easiest to differentiate here is sec squared x 
So if we set, we know of course that that's the result of differentiating tan of x. So the idea is for u substitution set u equal to tan of x so that when we differentiate it let's just fully we get sec squared x that was in terms of x and of course that means that du is equal to sec squared x of dx So it's probably something I should have done before that, but we can do it now, is to expand that. Expand that expression. So that would be tan n to the tan to the n minus two sec squared x minus tan. Simple expansion of the bracket. of x in terms of x. And then setting u equal to tan of x then du is equal to sex squared x dx. So maybe to I think it's just helpful to split it up. It's not necessary, but I think in this case, well, it is kind of necessary in this case because you want because you want the sex squared and the dx to be. You want to be able to segregate that, so you can split it into two integrals. So that's our first integral, and the second integral is just. Because integrals are, of course, a what do they call it? A um, linear operation. So you can break it up into sums and whatnot. Um, so that the rest of that goes something like this. And we noted that this this term here is. Um, basically du and we've just called tan u so tan to the n minus 2 is simply u to the n minus 2 this is something we can handle so Now has become u to n minus two, and the whole term sec squared x dx grouped together becomes du minus. We're not going to be able to deal with the tan n minus squared, but that's okay. We set that aside for the moment and deal with what we can do. So simply when you integrate n to the minus 2 becomes n to the minus 1 because you add 1 and n minus 1 will appear in the denominator and of course our original integral was over a range right so careful there about the limits of that integral. I left it out again. Whoops. And of course we want to relate it back to the original. It's time to bring the tans back.
and as I said it doesn't matter that we can't integrate this term you'll notice that the formula we originally were given is has it's, it's a repetition it's a recursive formula so it contains um, an instance of the original one within it. So, so of course, tan to oh, I'll just leave it on x. Tan to the n minus one of well tan. Essentially, what you got to recognize is that ten of pi on four to any power is one. And you don't need to write the second because it's minus ten of zero, which is zero. But this is always going to be 1. And 1 to any power is just 1. So I, I could write it in, which is not supposed to be explicit, and I probably should. But 1 to any power is, of course, 1. It, it's irrelevant what that power may be. And, well, it's not irrelevant entirely because if if the power is an, to a negative power then we're going to be in trouble because you would need to take the inverse of that but of course we remember that the original condition was that and there's always going to be an original condition attached that uh, in this case n sorry about the scrolling uh, n is always upwards of 2 so you're not going to come into any problems there because n minus 1 the smallest value possible for that would be 2 minus 1 because n has to be upwards of 2 and that would be 1 and so it's going to be a positive power as you can see n minus 1 will always be a positive power um, and I think pretty much always n is an integer but they haven't been explicit about that then lo and behold we have arrived at and remember I said it didn't matter that we didn't we weren't able to do this formula because you'll notice that now the second bit is the recursive bit which is i to the n minus 2 as required so that's our proof